Hey guys! Hopefully my audio doesn't sound too weird. Uh, I think I'm actually getting a summer cold at the time of recording this because of course I am. That is just my luck. And that's the joy of living in California when we're having 115 degree summers. Anyway, so I am a naughty, naughty, naughty bean. And I technically stole this idea from my friend because my buddy, uh, the Zodiac Lord on his DA posted a poll of like topic videos. And I really, really liked this because I, had, I hadn't thought to do a video on this. And so I asked him, I'm like, hey, hey, bud, can I do a video on that too? And he was like, yeah, go ahead. I don't control topics. The fuck? So <laughs> he didn't really say the fuck. That's just me ad-libbing because it's me. And... Whew, ooh, it's hot. All right, so let's just get started. So I need to explain myself before I actually get into the actual pet beeves. And no, this isn't clickbait. I just, I feel like I should explain myself because in the world of role playing, there is a giant spectrum of how to do it. And not a lot of people do it the way I do it, which is why I feel like I should explain. So first of all, one, I've never done RP forums and I've never done long form forums or long form RPs. I've tried... I know I'd be wondering, Michelle, the fuck's a long, what's an RP forum and what's a long form RP? Okay, so uh, I, this could totally not be the technical term for them. This is just what I call them and no one else has ever corrected me on this. So an RP forum is sort of like a thread, sort of like Reddit or Tumblr. Mostly, I mostly see it on Tumblr where people would end up um, with these like giant blocks of text and these chains where they would be doing their role plays and long form is usually where you're doing it a lot like a novel where you're doing it in a paragraph type of style over how I do it. I tend to do it in script format and I've always sort of done it this way and I'm going to explain why in a minute. So, but those are the ones I I've never really done. I've dipped my toe in, never had that much fun. Didn't do it. Especially for as bad as to say, to, uh, tongue tied. It is to say, about that uh that's a lot of investment that i just don't have time to do so there's that another one is how i started doing role plays and that is so how i started doing them was back on this magical magical program called microsoft instant messenger <laughs> or aam i think i was aim first and then i went to msn messenger but uh whatever then i got bought up by skype so i did it on skype and now i do it on discord in my phone so that was my evolution was I went from MSN and then I went to not doing role plays for a long time to doing it again on Yahoo Messenger, which pretty much was MSN Messenger. It was just the Yahoo version of it. And me and Anna Aerofix Dracona would do like these really stupid crack role plays all the fucking time. And that's what started the Crackland Adventures. <laughs> you guys have probably heard about me talk about it with Zodiac and our streams and junk, but that's what started it. it was Anna's the one that started it for me but I originally used to do them with some of my friends um a really good one is uh, Cotton Canada or Marley I think it Marley draws or Marley um he 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 members he members my Naruto trashy role play days but I went from fandom stuff and fan characters to weird crossovers with my friends stories that were never canon in any of our stories but they were just fun to dick around with and fun to like flesh out characters and personalities and those little stupid adventures would actually help inspire certain events that will happen later on and another good thing is when you do when you start off with like fandom role plays and then going into oc role plays and just crack land shenanigans is you sort of have um, like a realm of reality to work with. You know, you kind of already have preconceived rules of this universe that you work off of, and that's also a really important thing. And it's easier to understand ground rules with role playing. But no, that's not the point of this video, is it? The point of this video isn't for me to ramble on about role plays for over four minutes, four to five minutes. It's to explain my pet peeves in them. Because I've done it for a long time, and I've written it on my little list here. So let's get into it. But there's my little explanation. So. Oh, I guess there's one more I didn't do. Great. Tangents already because I'm an idiot. So the reason why I like script format, because I started talking about it and not doing it, was it was faster, it was easier, and then when I moved to texting, yes, yes, children, I used to do role plays on my phone via text back before my phone was a smartphone, so I had to do um, 
the whole, you know, tapping S on your phone seven times to get an S sort of things. And so that's why doing those types of uh, role plays were a lot easier because of the limitations of the technology at the time. So let's get into the pet peeves now, shall we? The first one is, I just wrote on here, the bugger. And it's the, I want to role play all the time. Now, I haven't dealt with this in a very, very long time, which is good, but I used to deal with it. A lot of my friends understand that I have a hectic schedule and I understand my friends have a hectic schedule. And other things too is where I just, I don't want to be on my computer all the time because I use my computer for work. You know, yada, yada, yada. And the bugger is the person that, pretty much your friendship has just become a role play. Like you guys don't talk about anything else besides role play stuff. You don't dick around. You don't, you don't, uh, take breaks and chat. Cause even in my role plays now, me and my friends take constant breaks and just chat and be stupid and dumb sometimes, you know, where we share memes, we find funny comments to laugh about. Maybe I rage about a video game I'm playing or they rage about something going on in their life. Either way, our friendship isn't just role playing. And, I've had a couple of people which are really sweet now, because before I used to have it, it was really annoying, where they'd be like, oh, I'm sorry, I hope I'm not bugging you, no, 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 And I'm like, no, you're not bugging you, I'm just really busy right now. And they're like, oh, okay. And it, it never bothers me when someone does something like that. But I've had people in the past where they repost their, their, their like, reply, like, 15 times in the same day, when earlier that day or the day before, I will say, hey, I won't be on my phone much, or hey, I won't be online much, or maybe my internet's out, or yada, yada, yada. And they would just really, really bug about it to where it wouldn't be fun anymore because I would have to take these constant breaks to where role-playing felt more like an obligation than something just for fun that I did with my friends. Now, pet peeve number two is the god mode, taking control of another person's character or OC or whatever. So the god mode is when you pretty much don't ask permission and you do life-altering things to someone else's character out of their control. Now, it's different if you talked about it beforehand. I will use an example of a magical, terrible roleplay with a buddy of mine. Was We were were, uh, exchanging characters, and one of their characters said something to my character, so I had to, like, pause the roleplay. I'm like, hey, okay, so I have to ask you this question. My character would 100% respond to your character doing this thing, but that thing can drastically alter your character forever. Do you want me not to do it? And they were like, oh my god, and they were laughing about what I said they were going to do. Which, okay, some people would be like, oh, well, that takes away the mystery of the roleplay and stuff. Yeah, but at the same time, it's you're getting an understanding, so you're not just god-moding someone else's character, you know? And they were like, okay, go ahead, do it. You're going you're gonna to find something funny when you do it. So my character did it, and it ended up in more wacky shenanigans afterwards because of things with my friend's character. And we just had a blast. But... Even they were saying how, like, I'm happy that you asked me. You would be surprised how many role plays I did in the past where people would control my character and not give me a reason or just do it. And this isn't something small like, you know, having your character get a drink. It would always be, like, super severe stuff. And it just wouldn't be fun anymore because then I'm sitting here like, do you want to just control my character? Do you want to do this? Because I thought the whole point was my interpretation of it so we can, like, get the back and forth, you know? But... I digress. Let's get on to pet peeve number three. I was going to say two, and I just did two. Smart, Michelle. Smart. And I put leading the way. And so what I mean by that is when, like, I'm the one instigating the role play. Like, because I've had friends in the past do this where they're like, oh, I want to role play. I want to role play. We haven't role played in so long. And then we do it. And then they're not putting their effort into it. And again, I'm not saying, like, you need to be there 24-7. I obviously said that's already a pet peeve of mine. I hate buggers. But, like, you know, don't tell me you really, really, really want to roleplay, and then when we do it, you're just not interested anymore. Like, I'm the only one coming up with plot point ideas. I'm the only one coming up with character interactions. I'm the only one making scenarios. That's not fun. You know, it should be like a 50-50 thing. Or if you're doing, like, a big group roleplay, you know, make it so it's even on everybody kind of thing. Um, I had that happen recently where I was doing a big role play that I'm, I'm pretty bad in myself because I've been working on stuff, but it's a role play of about three people. And so we've each been like, okay, we only say like this many things together when another person's not here because our characters are all in this room together. It'd be kind of weird if like just these two went on an adventure and then your character's just kind of in the room, just kind of chilling, you know? So that's a good way it's done. 
But it was just so aggravating because it's like I would run out of ideas and then these people would get mad at me because they're like, wait, why is it that like this would happen or oh why don't we role play anymore i'm like i don't know don't you have any ideas don't you have even if it's something fucking stupid like it's better than me just literally coming up with every single concept every plot point every character inter- interaction every conflict because then i'm sitting here like i could be just doing this on my own where i'm writing my own shit which i do anyway so there's that one for leading the way now the next one after that is So it's being second guessed and modded over. So by that, it's different than the God Mode one. It's where, like, I would say something and then the person would be like, I don't feel like your character would say that. And not in a criticism way or a critique way, because like I've said, I've done role plays to help me flesh out some characters in the past. And so sometimes a character at the start of a role play compared to how they are now are completely different characters because I've just worked with it that long. Now, that being said, when it's something like, oh, um, and and not a reminder because that's different. Um, a good example of this is like when characters are God moding, this is kind of a thing and or not, not God moding, um, Meta-ing. Meta-ing in, like, D&D terms and stuff. And so what meta-ing is, is when pretty much the character knows something that they shouldn't because the player knows it. So that being said, a good example is, uh, Pro Jared did a good example of this, where it's like, um, you know, when you're playing a video game like Skyrim, you want to explore those caves. You want to, like, explore those caves because you're like, okay, as a gamer, that cave is going to have shit in it for me. That makes sense. I'm gonna go in that cave. I'm gonna go kill some bears and spiders or or raiders or whatever. Not raiders. That's fucking Fallout. Whatever. You know, get the loot and leave. Now, when you want to role play or like even D and D or anything, you want to put yourself in that actual situation. And in doing so, you're like, okay, would my character actually go in that cave? You know, just because you're wandering around and you're like, oh, look, there's a cave. Well, it's like, huh, maybe they would only go in there if there was like, it's like they need shelter or they were paid to explore this cave. But chances are, if my character is just kind of wandering around and sees this cave, they're not going to stop whatever they were doing, whatever mission they were planning, whatever they were going to go do next to be like, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to go loot this cave because I 100% know there's loot in that cave. There is no way, unless your character has some, like, foresight or magic, that they would 100% know there's shit in that cave. But the player knows there's stuff in that cave. You know? So it's doing stuff like that. And it just, it gets really aggravating because you'll post something and then they'll be like, no, 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 it's supposed to go like this. And again, it reiterates to the, well, okay, if you know how you want this to go why don't you just do it yourself? Like, why am I here? Why don't you just write your own story? Yada, yada, yada. And so the last one I wrote down is, might be a little uh, controversial, but uh, as you guys know, I don't give a shit. So, (laughs) Um, and that is when you do naughty things in role plays. So I don't do this so much anymore, but I used to back in the day when I was dumb and, you know, hormones are a thing. And I was lonely. So, you know, I'm fine doing naughty interactions with characters that make sense. But I usually kind of just glows over it because for me, I don't know, that stuff's not that interesting. And I put down here, the reason why it's on here isn't that it's a thing. It's that when some people make it literally the only thing they'll role play. To where I've had to cut out a lot of people who I used to role play with. Because when I'm like, oh yeah, I miss our stories, that would lead up to the naughty things. And they'd be like, yeah, but let's just roleplay naughty things. And I'm like, yeah, not really comfortable with that anymore. Kind of want story to progress. You know, besides just doing the do. Because uh, if that was the case and I just wanted to do that, I don't know. I have a partner. I'd actually just go have sex. But, <laughs> fuck, I should probably cut that out. That's terrible. That's terrible. But, um... Yeah, I've got nothing wrong with when it makes sense in a story context, just kind of like how in a lot of literature, that makes sense. Like, if I'm reading a normal book, and a sex scene happens, but it happens in the plot. Like, it doesn't just happen out of nowhere. It's like, okay, makes sense for these characters to be doing this, makes sense for the plot reasons, oh, it's brought up back later, okay, cool, whatever, 
It's a scene. It's a thing. That's fine. But when it's like, okay, this is just the entirety of the thing... It's boring, and it's like, why are the characters even doing the do in the first place? Are they just doing it to do it? Because then it's just annoying, and it's not as much fun. Uh, it's kind of the whole point of fucking role-playing, is it's supposed to be fun. And I guess another thing, too, is, again, these are things I haven't dealt with in a long time, but it's, it's when people... They get, like, again, it goes back to the buggy thing, where, like, they expect uh, it's a hypocrisy thing that's a better way to put it it's a hypocrisy thing pretty much it's like okay i'll say hey life's really hectic right now or hey moving hey vacation whatever i'm not going to be able to role play for a while i'm just not you know especially back in the day when it was literally via text and it wasn't on any like messenger thing because again smartphones weren't really a common thing back in those days which weren't that long ago but cry i'm old um you know, and then they'd be like, okay, cool. But then they would still bug me about it. But then the second, the flip, the, the scroll would be, re- the scroll would be reversed. But the tables are turned on them. And they'd be like, I'd be like, hey, here's this. And they're like, hey, 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 stop bugging me. I'm busy. And I'm like, oh, so you're allowed to be busy and have life experiences and junk like that. But I'm not. I have to be on your time. That's also not fair. That's not understandable. And so I think that's a good place to end it here. I hope you guys enjoyed my... That's all I have written down. Unless I literally think of something later when I'm editing this and I throw it in here. But uh, I hope you guys enjoyed my role player pet peeves video. And as always, guys, I will. See you next time. Bye!